Mr. Mark Selby, how are you, sir? Doing very well, Mr. Matthew Gordon. Which you, yeah. This is a very different backdrop. Are you? Where are you? I am in Ireland on a bit of a ah, holiday, actually. The mothership. Yes, my wife's that. family still ha- wife still has family. So, and how are you finding Ireland? Uh, you know, beautiful Irish summer weather. Uh, yes. I think today is going to get all the way up to twenty degrees Celsius. So, you know, that's that's about as warm as it gets. So beautiful, yes. beautiful, beautiful. Yes. I have not been back for such a long time, such a long time. Um, and uh, okay, well, um, good, good. Well, thank you very much for making the time for, um, at a, away from your family just to to give us an update on what's going on the, on the nickel world. Um, we better get into it. So, wowzers. <laughs> what's yeah, happening out there? Bit of a slap. Uh, you know, I'd said that we were going to see, a, 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 you know, see a dip below the 19,000, but I thought we would maybe get back down to 18-ish. Um, but we've we've gone all the way down to 17.3, just under $8 a pound. Uh, you know, I think the key thing, and again, this is, you know, copper came off 15% from the highs as we expected, you know, this as it got to 11,000 people talking about it going higher than 11 might have been uh, a little or a lot premature. Um, but, uh, you, you know, I think a couple things, one, you know, it's seasonal sell in May go away. Um, you know, that's taken a little bit of steam out of all of the, the base metals and the fact that copper didn't squeeze any higher, uh, again, sort of, you know, uh, you know, got people to put, uh, their hands back, uh, on their wallets, but, you know, key thing here, you know, from the beginning of the year, uh, we're still 15% off the lows on the fall. So the fall, sorry, from from earlier in the winter back in February, um, you know, forecast uh, at the start of the year was that we'd get back up to 20,000 by the end of the year. And I don't, you know, don't, don't see that, uh, you know, that story changing at all. You know, demand's been relatively robust year to date up 9% through the first quarter. You know, Chinese stainless production is up 15% year to date May uh, for 300 series stainless. So, you know, in terms of, you know, a lot of the underlying things, you know, generally in pretty decent shape. Right. Okay. And obviously there's a, there's a bunch of other kind of variables and factors that we, we talk about. Um, so influencing market uh, conditions. So do you want to talk about maybe Indonesia? What are we hearing coming out of there? Yeah. So I think, you know, the key piece here is, um, you know, again, always looking at prices in China just to get a sense of, of, of where that market's going, given it's, you know, two thirds demand. Um, you know, with the drop in nickel price, we, we saw sulfate and NPI prices drop off a little bit, but, uh, you know, generally saw um, spreads uh, continue to converge. Uh, again, we talked starting, I think, but, you know, just over a year ago that we're going to see this great convergence and, and this is continuing uh, to come through. Um, there was an Indonesian nickel conference this pa- the week before last. Uh, I didn't go there, but one of my team was there. Uh, and, you know, a couple of the big stories coming out of that was one, Talking about preserving high grade, there was one minister talking about you know their higher grade saprolite material running out by um, the end of t- by twenty twenty nine. I don't think the, the grade decline is going to be quite that severe. However, you know I would argue that most analysts are not you know properly accounting for you know the continual grind down of average grades um, Indonesia a- as we move as we move forward. So I mean it's good to see that get some airtime. Uh, the other piece of it is. Um, uh, discussion on actually limiting uh, any new NPI smelters being built um, and some talk of even, uh, you know, effectively revoking permits that have already been granted for some additional units uh, going forward. It's not going to be a massive increase in in new capacity. You know, the capacity is really starting to shift to uh, MHP laterite um, uh, HPAL plants being built um, to produce MHP. Uh, So, um, but again, I think in terms of, you know, this you know big big increase in in Indonesian uh, supply at least on the NPI side I think is really starting you know we'll start to see that level out to some extent um, and then we'll see how quickly the HPAL capacity ramp up you know I do expect it to ramp up <laughs> we need it as as a new source of supply um, but uh, again th- these kind of noises out of Indonesia is really talking about limiting ore supply and so far to date you know the amount of ore that's been delivered in Indonesia. Um, is uh, much lower than it was last year. So not even sort of a below forecast, but actually down in terms of volumes. And then the other piece of it is the fact that uh, you're, you're, you know, there's still a lot of talk about how many, you know, how many permits are going to be issued uh, for ore mining this year. Uh, 
we've talked about Indonesia being the OPEC of nickel um, all by itself. And so, again, I think this is something the analysts are discounting in terms of Indonesia's willingness to manage supply to you know keep prices you know high, a little bit higher than they otherwise would be. Right, and um, we, we're talking there about the kind of supply side of, of the equation here. Um, and at the beginning, in terms of the vagaries of you know, um, you know, in- inventory building, etc., at certain times of the of, of, of the year, are you still sort of optimistic about the, the the demand drivers more broadly outside of the kind of um, the, ch- the China Indonesia contains um, you know supply equation? Um, are you saying that automotives still firmly fixed on nickel as part of the solution? Is stainless still um, still going to actually you know? Drive higher for you guys because it just it just seems seems there's a, a bit of uncertainty out there. Yeah, no, our forecast for the beginning of the year was double digit demand growth uh, this year. I don't see that changing at all. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of pause in the uh, restocking in the battery supply chain just because lithium prices have come off uh, a bit, and as we know that that drove the destocking in the, in the prior year. Uh, but you know, fundamentally, you know, overall plug in vehicle sales were up thirty percent year over year. Uh, battery full battery vehicles were up fourteen percent. Plug in hybrid up fifty percent. So again, those are numbers that a lot of analysts don't have in their forecasts at, at that kind of scale. So you know, uh, I think in terms of the 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 battery demand side, all good. And then on the stainless side, uh, again, last year had massive growth in uh, Chinese stainless production and demand. Uh, and you know, expect to see so far year to date May it's up fifteen percent year over year. So. You know, very strong, healthy, um, uh, underlying demand growth in stainless steel, which, which again, I don't expect to slow down. That's the one thing that most analysts have wrong. Uh, CRU just put out their uh, quarterly update, and again, I'm naming names now. Uh, and they have nickel demand, uh, you know, seven or eight percent, which is not bad for the next three years, but they're down falling down to effectively what's trend nickel demand of four to five percent. And what's pulling that number down is they only have stainless steel production growth of two to three percent. Um, by 27, 28, which again is one third of, of what the historical trend is. Uh, again, stainless steel is a high strength, you know, a long life, highly recyclable material. And so, you know, if anything, it, it's it's gained market share for a very, very long time. And, you know, we don't see that slowing down anytime soon. So to your question of, of, of in terms of the, you know, demand forecast for the year, yeah, no, no change uh, at this point in time and, and expect to see, you know, double digit demand growth by the time we get to year end. Okay. And also Bloomberg jumping um, on on the bandwagon here. Um, they recently, I think, video article commenting on the Indonesian uh, nickel sector um, headline, quite aggressive, the deadly mining complex powering the EV revolution. Um, there's, there's a few repercussions repercussions um, there potentially, which bode well for Western producers of nickel, because no one wants to be associated with deadly mining. Um, what was your take on the Bloomberg article? No, it was, it was, it was, it was excellent. I mean, it was, it was, you know, uh, very, very in-depth. We've had kind of one-off articles on certain dimensions of it, you know, from, from certain public, some, again, some good publications, but I think, you know, this was a very, very detailed article and then as well, they put out an excellent video, you know, with 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 a lot of, you know, if you really want to see what nickel mining in Indonesia looks like, you know, please see these videos. It does not need to look like that. There's responsible ways to mine and process material, which don't require, you know, ending up having workers killed and not silting up uh, all of the local streams and rivers and, and also silting up um, uh, local communities. And, you know, most importantly, basically poisoning the health of, of it. You know, when you're burning millions of tons of coal, it release, you know, trace amounts of, of mercury, lead, other heavy metals that are contained in the coal. You know, not surprisingly, you're seeing, you know, some, some sort of broader, you know, community health issues. I think it's a wake-up call for the car companies. Uh, they've kind of, and, and the Bloomberg article did a good job of, of getting quotes from them. You know, they talked about, oh, none, we don't have any direct supply uh, quote unquote relationships with these players. And that kind of just completely ignores the fact that, you know, the nickel goes to precursor company, which goes to cathode company, which goes to a battery company, which then goes to the car company. So by definition, they're five steps removed in, in, the, in the process. And so, uh, you, you know, they've realized that there are just not many options for nickel right now. So they're kind of 
you know, closing their eyes, holding their nose and, and, and hoping that no one notices. But I think, I think people now have noticed. And so, yeah, you know, people didn't like blood diamonds. People didn't like blood cobalt. And I think, you know, blood nickel is going to be, you know, another black eye here um, that people are going to be, you know, really paying attention to, you know, and the young, you know, environmentally conscious consumers who you want to sell electric vehicles to, you know, are going to be paying attention and are going to start asking questions about where their nickel comes from. So, which <laughs> is good for us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I will put um, links to the article and to the video um, in, in there because it raises some pretty important questions about the ethics and shand washing and, you know, dis- distancing, but ultimately still taking the, 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 the product because it's, it's, it's cheap. Um, but yeah, not, would, would not be good form from the car manufacturers. Um, talking of which, how are they doing out there? Are they selling? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've seen uh, electric vehicles. So again, China was the big driver April year over year, but global demand was still up 5% in most of the other global markets, uh, other markets globally. Europe had some sub, Germany in particular had subsidies come off. So, you know, there's there's a little bit of, um, you know, sort of pull forward that happened last year that didn't happen this year. So uh, again, you know, sub, the, the, the massive doom and gloom um, that was was there um, was you know not necessarily um, w- warranted and and the other piece is you know we're seeing a shift from from full battery electric vehicles to more plug-in hybrids um, which you know again in a lot of markets is a is a is a more feasible uh, option uh, just because you can continue to drive on a gas motor if they aren't aren't able to charge up and so. That that still means they're not the batteries aren't as big, but you know people are you know still deploying lots of batteries. So if you look at the amount of nickel being deployed in batteries, uh, you know that that's still growing at a pretty healthy clip, and that's ultimately you know what we want to see going forward. Right. Okay. So the, the, I think we're hearing the same thing ac- across the whole um, battery spectrum when we speak to um, different CEOs and different um, uh, cons- consultants are saying the same thing. So um, hopefully. That continues um, as it is. Uh, I agree with you. I think in some instances, actually, the hybrid uh, cars are taking up more metals um, as a result. So we have to cover the bases. Uh, let's talk about stainless steel. That's the kind of big driver. Um, China still on track with double digit growth there. Yeah. So up fifteen percent year to date May for the the nickel containing series and and up twelve percent overall. Um, obviously, it's the nickel containing three hundred series. Uh, High, high nickel containing that that's the most important again that's continuing off a pretty strong growth in in 2023 uh, uh, which you know t- to me just reinforces the fact that you you know analysts continue to underestimate you know what global stainless demand uh, looks like and and we should con- continue to see global you know robust growth uh going forward right okay so and, and, you, and are you going to call anyone out this time are we just- We've had a few, few moments like that from you. Is your expectation that uh, maybe that people will kind of start paying attention and, um, yeah, yeah, get it right? Get up, beat up on CRU a little bit um, earlier yeah. in the thing. So yeah, I, again, you know, having stainless, you know, stainless demand, stainless production growth drop to two to three percent a year by you know out in the twenty seven twenty eight time frame makes no sense. Uh, you know, if you put if you put you know, trend stainless production growth uh, out that way, guess what? You end up with markets in deficit. So uh, that's, you know, that's that's where we are. That's what we believe in. And, and again, hopefully these guys, once the consensus starts to move that way, will start to update their, you know, forecasts in a way that makes 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 uh, much more sense. Okay, right. Well, let's move on to happier, happier things like uh, com- company news. I think people really like this bit from you. Um, start with Magna Mining. What's the yeah, news so, there? so a couple of good pieces here. So, um Magna is moving forward with their advanced exploration, uh, advanced exploration uh, drift. Um, so they're going to be pulling out 20,000 tons from 109 footwall zone. Those footwall zones are pretty high grade. Um, so they should get a pretty nice chunk of change from that. So they've awarded a contract uh, just to start um, start um, um, driving that, uh, that drift down into uh, the area that they want to mine. Uh, they're continuing to dewater uh, that operation and, and that will allow them you know to eventually reopen the mine they acquired that from Sabanye Stillwater a few years ago and they've had some pretty good drilling success so you know nice to see that continue to move forward uh, in the Sudbury Basin uh, one of our neighbors EV Nickel who's got their car laying deposit uh, they were testing another area of one of their big bulk ultra mafix um, and they had surface grab samples 
Uh, and again, 79% of the assays were 0.24 better, which, you know, for, for the type of material that we have, that, uh, that is good grade. And, and some of the grades went all the way up to 0.34%. Uh, one of the other ones uh, globally that, that has one of these bulk tonnage um, deposits is uh, Western Mines Group. So they've got their Mulga tank uh, uh, deposit. Uh, what was interesting, a few weeks ago, they put out some drill holes uh, where it looks like they've hit a higher grade area at the contact of, of where the deposit sits next to the host rock. Um, that is where you would typically expect to see that kind of high grade show up. Um, they put out a release today or yesterday saying they've halted the stock until Monday. So, um, you know, we, we will see uh, what comes out news release wise. Um, it, it, again, good to see uh, more of these types of deposits uh, moving forward. Um, and then at, at the high end, at the high grade end of the spectrum, uh, you've got London Metals putting out a resource uh, on Baker. Um, that sits at the end of the Cambolda complex uh, at the other end from uh, where the Beta Hunt mine uh, that I used to uh, operate uh, with RNC Minerals and a nice uh, initial resource at their Baker deposit, which is a million tons at 3.3% nickel with some copper and cobalt and, and all of that within 350 meters of surface. So, you know, not too deep uh, at that point. So, uh, again, good to see more nickel sulfide projects moving forward. And then on the financing front, uh, be nice to see some chunky checks uh, being written. Uh, again, both of these are at the higher higher grade end of the spectrum. So uh, Power Nickel um, on the back of the high grade copper PGM hits that they had with you know a little bit of nickel. Um, they've just completed a twenty million dollar flow through financing, which was uh, great to see for Terry. Um, and then Premium Nickel, uh, who are uh, continuing to drill down in Botswana. Have done another uh, completed the first 15 million of I think what will be a 27 million dollar total financing. So you know, good to see that that have you know move forward on that front. Fantastic. Well, and, and what about you? I've got to ask. Yeah, what about yourself? How are things going? Yeah. Oh no, continue to move move very well on all fronts. The front end engineering, you know, engineering is going well, permitting is going well, and then you know the uh, initial financing discussions we're having both on the equity and the debt side, you know, are both progressing, you know, very very well, which is great. You know, one other thing I know there are some questions came in from um, one of, one of the listeners uh, was talking about Homeland Nickel, uh, which was formerly Spruce Ridge, um, that uh, is owned by some of the investors who own Canada Nickel. Uh, and and one of our guys is involved in it. They had a question around the debt. Um, I, the, the the debt here um, is not debt that they owe to someone else. Um, there was some debt involved in the project, and that debt was actually assigned to them. So that money is theoretically owed to to Homeland Nickel. So uh, don't worry about seeing that kind of stuff show up on 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 their balance sheet. Um, it's due to them, and and just just allows them to have full. They inherited that from the original owners of the property, and it gives them sort of more control uh, over the project um, uh, going forward. So, I, again, that's an interesting uh, laterite in deposit in Oregon, um, which in an area uh, that used to have an operating nickel mine and smelter back in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, right through, I think, until the early 1990s. So, in terms of the U.S., there's very few places to find nickel, um, but uh, Oregon is one of them. Well, there we go. Good, good news, good news. Well, we, we should, we'll probably do uh, an update, for a full update for, with you guys soon. I, w- I would have thought, and it'd be nice to sort of hear what, see what kind of nickels getting up to across the uh, the portfolio. Um, Mark, well, I'm going to let you get back to your Irish holiday. Uh, I'm going to get back to some turfing, some <laughs> skills I learned in Ireland. Um, and I'm, it's it's a surprise, surprisingly hard work actually, but it's it's probably. Very, very good exercise, and um, for a fifty-year-old, I, I kind of feel now I've got the body of a of a of a thirty-two-year-old. There we go. After all this, <laughs> and if anyone wants that body, it's in the basement. <laughs> uh, Mark, uh, good to see you. Um, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Talk to you soon.